Hi YouTube world, welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. I am Adrienne, I live in New York City. I love playing with makeup. Today I'm gonna to be doing something I don't normally do, mainly because it's really cost prohibitive for me to do it, but I have been collecting Jones Road Beauty makeup for quite some time. I have a basket filled with every single one of the line's products. I have been putting them to the test, many of them greater than six months. So I know this brand pretty well, and I feel like I could impart to you some thoughts if you're considering some of these products. And so I am ready now, I feel like, to deliver what I would recommend and what I would steer clear from and why. So if that interests you, learning all about Jones Road and why you should or shouldn't invest in it, stay tuned. Jones Road Beauty, the moment it was announced, I was the first person when they sold a product that purchased something. I mean, I have been obsessed with these releases. Some have been an immediate love, hate, somewhere in the middle, but I don't know. There's something about the aesthetic of the brand that just really hits me. It's almost like this minimalistic, clean girl that's now grown up and is an adult. And I feel like I'm that person. That and Bobbi Brown as a makeup artist, I have adored forever. And I always loved the Bobbi Brown line. So understanding that has now been taken over by Estee Lauder and um, it's not her brand any longer. There's still some products in that line that are incredible that I think have not been surpassed by other products in the market. And so I have more than a soft spot for Bobbi Brown. So when she decided to start her own endeavor and it looked so different, so different. The look, the feel of it was really different except the way she talked about application was very much still that old Bobby Brown that I love so much. So I've really thought about how I can efficiently talk about all these products. I think the best thing for me to do is to apply them and talk about their attributes. And I'm actually gonna have to apply makeup twice and you will see why. Apologies that my nails are a little crazy. Um, I didn't have time. Right now, I don't have anything on my face whatsoever because the foundation that she came out with is really meant to be a skincare makeup hybrid. And so I wanted to just put it on for you so that you can see. The shade that I got was Fair. The foundation is very messy. I mean, it's chunky, it's messy, it's really not the most elegant delivery of product. You, This also has a lot of oil in it and there are a lot of essential oils and oils that are supposed to be very beneficial for your skin, especially if you have dry skin. Um, the scent is so beautiful. It's like, and a lot of the products like Miracle Bomb has the same scent. It's this sort of essential oils, aromatherapy, very spa-like. I mention that because if you are sensitive to fragrance, you cannot use these products. There's no getting around it because it's embedded in everything, everything, everything. Um, this product, again, as I mentioned, because it has a lot of oil, it's split. So you actually have to stir it pretty aggressively. I just recently stirred it, so I don't need to re-stir it, um, but it can get pretty gross. It just, it's a really gross, chunky, not attractive. So. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of product and I'm just going to put it on with my fingers uh, and dot a little bit around my face. And less is more, so actually I'm going to scrape off some. And this is the amount of product that I will use. So you see this is a pretty good color match. You'll find that there's, feels like there's almost chunks in this. I think that's just sort of part of the formula that's just kind of clumped up. It looks as though like when you warm it up into your skin, it does really melt into the skin. This product is just something that just gets eaten up by the skin, really just absorbs really well. I have combo skin, so I'm actually quite oily in my T-zone, dry around the perimeter of my face. And so 
This product being that it is as thick, kind of uh, really nutrient dense with that, with that, with all those oils in it, is not ideal for me. When I am done blending this in, which I'm essentially done, so it gives pretty light coverage. Um, but it does do some evening out, creates a really nice canvas for the face. My face feels though very, very heavy. It feels like I put oil on my face and kind of like a thick Vaseline type oil. I could feel almost like the little particles are dancing around on my skin. Um, I don't like the feeling. I think it's just extremely heavy. I would be curious if someone with very, very dry skin who uses this has that same type of feeling. Unfortunately for me, this product, being that it's so heavy and because it, it has so many of those essential oils, I have found some of my worst breakouts when I use this product. I actually picked up three concealers. I picked up the shade six, which more is more of a peachy corrector. I would normally put this over areas that have some brown um, in them. So kind of any of my sunspots, I would go ahead and dab this on or any like areas of discoloration. This product is really convenient. It's I feel like stick concealers were a thing growing up in the 80s and 90s, but they I don't know, you don't really find them as much and I do think they're a great air, way to deliver concealers. I know we've moved on to a lot of liquids and potted concealers, but there's a convenience factor to this that I really love that right doesn't exist with this. There's nothing convenient about this foundation. So I feel like there's some inconsistency there. Like think about ease of use, think about convenience. I think these are incredible for that. Um, I also picked up shades four as well as shade three. I'm going to use shade four just so you can kind of see the tone. Um, Shade four is definitely more along my area. I don't even know what I'm doing here. I'm just sort of like applying it in some spaces just so you could kind of see coverage. I'm kind of being generous with it just so you can see the product, um, especially since I'm gonna remove this so I can try other products. And this is shade three, which is a little bit brighter. I'll put a little bit more here, um, a little more here. These are really, really pretty. Um, you can easily blend them out with your finger and it, they blend really, really well. I find that these work really well with light covered foundations and gives those light covered foundations the coverage they really need and kind of blends in without changing too much the texture of whatever's underneath. And it's not a heavy concealer. But maybe this little guy here will just spot conceal and be a little more delicate but there you go i feel like that did a really good job so these are definitely a keeper winner for me the other product that was highly rated about was the tinted face powder i got mine in pinky rose this powder is quite pink and I think it might just be a little too pink for me, but I find that it has a really nice texture to it. It's super finely milled and I like it. I just don't love the color, but I think I get better results or similar results from my Moira loose powder, which I really like. So now I feel like my face feels pretty set wherever it is, whereas in the areas where it still exposed that foundation. It feels pretty sticky. So now it feels really smooth. I feel like my skin looks definitely smoother. I have powder bronzers from Jones Road. These are really beautiful. Um, again, similar packaging, magnetic. I actually have two shades. I have light tan and I have this color here, Dusty Rose, which is supposedly for fair skinned individuals and has gotten a lot of hype because it seems as though this is like a fair girl's dream and um, it's kind of a rosy tone. I'll apply it kind of lower down so you can see. And it is quite pretty. I know that a lot of people have not been able to find um, 
a similar color, but I am happy to report that I think I found a dupe. Um, not that it's a better price point by all means, though it is on sale. The Jane Iredale blush in the shade Flawless is the same exact color. I'm putting it on my other side just so you can see. It has that rosiness to it. It blends, it's like a, it really is like a true bronzer blush hybrid. And I feel like it is similar enough to the Jones Road. When Bobbi Brown was at Bobbi Brown, she released bronzers that were also in very many different colors, including lots of rosy uh, bronzers. So I think this is also why people are a big fan of this product because it was, they were sort of introduced from that to that concept from the original brand and I think it carried over to this brand. I do think it's a beautiful, beautiful product. Powder products from this line generally are really, really strong. My favorite, um, my favorite products actually, which is funny because I don't think it's the products that get the hype, but this is the light tan bronzer. It is a matte bronzer, but it does not feel flat on the skin and it just creates such a beautiful color. If you are in the market for a matte bronzer, I do think like this is fantastic. I do think it's just so beautiful, creates a really pretty finish. And I don't know if you can see, but my hair easily gets stuck to the perimeter of my face because of the wet the foundation, because um, it's that sticky. The other product that I really enjoyed is the Best Blush. I don't know that they have other colors in this one, but this is in Pop, P-O-P. -P. It's like a little petal rose color, really pretty, warmer than the Dior Backstage Famous Blush. You can be quite generous and it really just does that. It really does give you that pop that you want. It's beautiful. It has a satiny sheen to it, but I do think it's immensely flattering and has a very universal quality to it. I really love this. I'm very surprised that I like it as much as I do. The pan size is quite small, but I'm using one of my favorite brushes, the Sigma Soft Blend 60. It has a tapered end and I feel like it picks up perfectly to like dust on a product this size. So I think this is a great product. Real quickly are the brow products. I have the brow gel in brunette as well as the brow pencil. I will first show you what the tinted gel looks like. So here's the tinted gel. It is quite a large wand and there's a lot of product on here. I've made the mistake before of kind of going in with all that product. It's extremely hard to control. So I wiped off quite a bit and I am going to brush this lightly through my brows. I am very surprised that this product contains such a large brush. I think it would have been smarter to create a product with a shorter brush, especially if you are marketing to older individuals that have sparser brows. You want to be more precise and something like this just covers way too much, way too quickly and can look so, so gloopy. I also find that the brow gel doesn't contain that much hole to it. So while it contains pigment, it doesn't contain hold. And I hope you can see it just, it actually makes my, my brows look more sparse than I'm used to. And it's like very strange for me, but I'm going to leave that as is just so you can really see the product. If I were to dip in and go in at full force, I want to show you what it looks like. So I didn't clean up this brush and I'm just going in with it. Deposit so much product that it leaves like all these like gloops in the brow. Maybe if I had a lighter shade, but it's just not a very attractive product. It just looks really painted on. And when I really pull away, you'll see how dark and impactful this is. 
this is too much. This is too much eyebrow for me. Um, on my next application, I will show you the brow pencil because I much prefer this one. It's much easier to control. Even though it's a thick pencil, I have preferred this. We have a lip liner. I got mine in the shade Nude Rose. It's a sharpenable pencil. I really like this color and I really like this product. It is both creamy and firm enough. Um, I love the tone. It really is on me, like your lips will felt better. I love that I can just blur it out and so I'm creating my lip line, but it's not really, really strong. It's kind of diffuse. It reminds me very much of the new Lisa Eldridge lip enhancers that have this uh, same quality. Stays put, has this blurring effect, really beautiful. I think this is a winning product. I will top it with the Cool Gloss in Original. Uh, this one has a very fun, kind of whimsical, childlike vibe to it. It's the type of glosses that you would have put on growing up. Um, squeezy tube, super high gloss, has a really strong oily component, so it feels very nourishing. And it has a cooling effect, so it's not a plumping effect. It is more like a you brush your teeth menthol like effect and if you accidentally taste some of it it's exactly that it's like toothpaste taste without the sweetness just the mintiness of it i think my biggest problem with this product it's really pretty i love the way it looks it makes the lips look like wow super juicy beautiful lovely Love, 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 love. In the long run though, I found that this really dries out my lips. I don't know if it's that menthol component, but unfortunately for me, this is a no. It's also very, very oily. and doesn't seem to have enough of the gel binding component that it stays put. So you just find that you're putting this on all day long, over and over again. And on me, again, that kind of menthol, it just has a real deep drying effect that by the end of the day, my lips were very tired, tired of this product. So this is a no-go for me. I do have like the best eyeliner. It's called the best pencil. Um, I have it in like brown and black. I will put on the brown, uh, set aside the black. Uh, spoiler alert, this is not the best pencil. So I am just quickly putting this on kind of the top part of my eye so you can see um, it has a real skippy quality to it so it's easy to draw on hard to build up and if you do manage to build it up what ends up happening is over the course of the day even if you used primer even if you set this with a shadow even if you did all the right things you will see that it starts to like split apart it starts to flake off. It's not the longest wear formula. So I just quickly put that on my waterline, which I do like it on the waterline, but it does not have a great wear time. I feel like it just keeps migrating all day long, which is not a good thing. I had to put up my hair because it is 90 degrees in New York City, even though it's nighttime. I have no idea what is happening in the world. I do have some of her eyeshadows. I have the best eyeshadow. I, I love the, the boldness of the best, the single, the only. Um, this is in smoky gray. It is nice. It's a good eyeshadow. Uh, the eyeshadows are some of my favorite parts of this line. And what I love about the shadows is this is a matte shadow in smoky gray. I find that there is some part of this that is not a flat gray. It has a neutral leaning color, which will work on every type of skin tone. And I just love that. I love that because I feel like sometimes you get products that lean too much one way or another, and it really is not flattering. <laughs> it's not flattering. I mean, it's flattering if you want to look like a dead person sometimes. It's more like a taupe gray. And I think it's immensely flattering like that's a one and done look so good I would recommend this especially if you're a minimalist with eyeshadows the other thing though that I would mention is occasionally I've noticed I missed the first release of this but I did pick up the this eyeshadow palette that was released 
It was limited edition. It came with four colors and a brush. And it came with this really dark chocolate brown, mid-tone brown, a vanilla. These are all mattes. And this beautiful shimmer shade, which I will show you. I mean, this is super metallic, beautiful silver. I'm going to put it on. But again, there is an element of warmth to this color. It is not flat silver. And I love that about it. I don't know what the first release of this eyeshadow palette was. I think this was a uh, volume two. I don't know what volume one looked like. I kicked myself for not investing in it because I think overall, this is a much better value. So if you do see this, I would recommend it, especially if you like to have some eyeshadow palettes that make for really easy eye looks. This is some of like the easiest daytime wear eye looks, or you can make a really beautiful smoky eye with this silver gorgeousness. I love this. Great, great. So you're seeing a trend here. The powders, the powders are all gorgeous. They're all gorgeous. One last thing I might as well put on right now. It's the Jones Road Beauty Mascara. This one is fairly new to me, meaning the actual mascara itself is fresh. So I can't speak to how it ages, but I do like how it makes my eyelashes look. I feel like it creates a really nice curl, hold, and um, adds volume. So I think it checks all the boxes for me. I don't know that it's worth going out and buying this mascara in particular, but if you see that it's in a set, I would buy it. I would repurchase again. It has this, these uh, natural bristles and it has this like little bit of a curve. It actually ends up really being quite helpful. I like to sometimes reverse the curve and really force it to push my extremely straight lashes up. And I feel like it helps, it helps in that department. So I hope you can see this is with, without, and it just creates this very dough-like effect, which I like. So again, this product, pretty good. Uh, doesn't come in any other color besides black. I would expect that down the road, I would see this in brown. And this is essentially the first look. I am going to wipe this all off, get this foundation off my skin before I get a darn breakout. And we will try a new grouping of products. We are starting fresh again. I have no makeup on my face except for the mascara. I kind of left it in the eyeliner, but everything else I wiped off. Oh, my skin already feels so much better. I was so tired of that heavy feeling. I am going to prep my skin with one of my favorite Bobbi Brown products, which is the Vitamin Enriched Face Base. I have a mini one, but I just want something to prep my skin a little bit before I use just the concealers because I'm trying to just show you different products, but at the same time, I want some little bit of slip on my face that the concealer can work with. And I feel like the Vitamin Enriched Face Base is such a beautiful product. I use I use it all the time. I I love getting minis. Um, I will use them up. I yeah. I just love this product. It's it's both hydrating, just really nourishing, um, great prep for makeup, and just creates the smoothing canvas. Um, I do think it has pore filling qualities. It's just really, really nice and never makes me break out. So, yay. And I love these concealer pencils so much because you can just put on sunscreen and do a little bit of this. You don't have to do as much, but I just wanted to show you the level of coverage as well as how easy it is to blend. I actually love using my fingers generally, but you can also use a brush. That's perfectly fine. I wanted to use the bronzing uh, products. So I have this product here, Shimmer Face Oil and Bronze. Just picked up some. And with this, you can use your fingers or you can use a brush. I will be consistent and just use my fingers to just show you. 
This product is really, really nice. Also has some of the essential oils, but it doesn't seem that it smells as strongly as the foundation itself or the Miracle Bombs. I'm gonna pick up with the brush and just add a little bit more color. There's a reason why I'm not applying it everywhere, so I just kind of wanted to show you. It gives this really pretty shimmer, but it isn't heavy at all. So this product I actually really like. I think it's a great little product. Sort of reminds me of Desium used to have a product like this and it was really pretty. You can mix it in with a foundation and it just gives you this glow. Other product is this gel bronzer that came out and I have mine in the shade light. This one is a little bit of a pain to get out. Um, I much prefer the pump component of the other one. Feels similar, it's more gel based, so less oil, and it doesn't have sparkles. It's just kind of juicy. And I did apply too much, but I wanted to show you, and I'm gonna pick a little bit more up and kind of just bronze myself. This gel bronzer packs more of a punch to it. You can keep building it up. I don't wanna use all of that because I wanna use another product on the other side of my face, but I just wanna show you. And I feel like it also imparts like a glow, but it is more gel-based. It's somewhat thicker than the oil, but whereas the oil has a sheen, this also has a different kind of sheen. It's just a different product. However, I also think they're almost too similar <laughs> to have both in your range when you have such a limited range. Though I will say this product, the Shimmer Oil, comes in lots of other colors, including some rosy colors. So I do think the intention here was to create more of a highlighter. I picked up in bronze because I don't really love highlighters. So maybe that's on me. I could have picked it up in pink and it would have been a whole other product. I would have never attached the two. But in my mind, I think these are very, very similar. On this side, I wanted to try two colors of the Miracle Bomb. I have Tawny in a large size here. You can see I've I've used this. I've I've used this. I've loved it. And this has more of a reddish tone to it, but it is very bronzy in nature. So I thought I would put it on and just sort of show you. So it's almost like a ruddy bronze, which I actually think is very natural, especially for someone like myself. So this is the famous miracle Bomb. I'll just talk about this once and then I'll just show you the colors. Um, it is a wax oil product, has color, has binding, has that really strong aromatherapy smell. And what you do is it's really hardened on the top and you just press into it strongly and it kind of like allows for you to mix the product. Once it reaches that state, it's really easy to go in and just pick up product. Now it's kind of a fun product in that it just makes you want to like dip your hands in and really get in there and touch your face and massage your face and kind of give yourself color and you're working it and it feels very editorial to use this product but you could see here like my hair is sticking like yeah you, you can't put your hair down when you use these products like you got to make sure no hair no no hair is in the mix here i have this miracle bomb in bronze one is more orangey and you see the mini ones I haven't actually broken the seal yet so I just did that real quickly here's that color probably put on too much but we're gonna go ahead put some on this one has more of a warm tone to it so hopefully you can see the difference I feel like the tawny gives me more of a reddish tone and this one gave me a little bit more of an orange tone. Of the two, I much prefer Tawny. I had always been happy with Tawny as a product, so I just, but I, I wanted to try all the shades, so. We also have Pinky Bronze, which is very popular. This one's really beautiful. It's more of a cool toned color. I'm gonna try to lay it, layer it up over here. And this one has more of a contouring effect. I feel like most people who are fair medium would probably really love this, especially if you are neutral or cool leaning, you're gonna like pinky bronze. So this is Sunkissed, even richer. 
I'm going to layer this over. So I feel like this has a lot of what Tawny has, but a little more brown. So here, I tried to show you the comparison of all the colors. It's a very gloopy product and hard for, for the light to sort of capture it. This is Tawny and this is Sunkissed. So Tawny is, you see how red it is. And then Sunkissed, you see how much more brown it is. I feel like people would probably go to this, but I just want to encourage you to look at Tawny because it actually does look quite natural and beautiful. And it's more of a bronzer blush effect. Um, here you have pinky bronze, which is the color I think would be very popular for light to fair shade tones. And then here you have bronze, which you can see sort of like how orange base it is. You can make these much sheerer than these swatches. So don't, you know, I just wanted to show you their undertone really well, but you can see it's, you know, they can really be blended out and built up. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility. And these also can go on the lips again, because it has that type of um, blend to it. I just find it makes my lips very pruney. I don't particularly like it on the lips for myself. Uh, they even sell a color like Au Natural, which is a colorless product, which is what they encourage. You just put on your skin whenever, uh, or you put on your lips. And I'll just show you really quickly what it looks like on my lips. So this is just Au Natural. And the mini sizes are quite generous, I think, and has a really, you know, it's a really great value. The full size is just gigantic and also very inelegant. You know, I don't, I don't know why, you know, coming out with this size made any sense whatsoever. I'll try this one on next. These are more of the blushy colors, um, but to each his own. I almost feel like the product should have been somewhere between this size and this size should have been the full size. No one's getting through this whole product. This shade here is flushed. It's really a pretty pink and I'm just gonna put it on the apples of my cheeks so you can see it work. The other one I have in a large size, which is Miami Beach. And it is a corally that has a little bit of a gold shimmer, very much like NARS Orgasm. Both very pretty. The product itself, like I said, it stays sticky on your skin. So do not have your hair down at any point unless you want hair to stick on your face. It is not a product that can easily be set down. I also have another fundamental problem with this product. As beautiful as it is, you can layer it up all day long. Um, when you see it's wearing down, because it will wear down, it doesn't have long lasting power. So you find yourself having to carry it with you and layer it up. My biggest issue is the days that I would wear this would be my no makeup makeup days. It also feels very summer, you know, like very gorgeous summer skin, very flattering. And unfortunately, and I think this is really the biggest drawback of this product for me, since it contains no SPF and because it's so oil based, it disrupts any SPF. So if you think you're going to put this on, over your SPF. Just know it will break down the SPF. And if you try to put SPF over this, it doesn't really work very well. And so I think the better version of this product ultimately is if they manage to put an SPF into this product, I would be really behind it. As it stands, I am really careful about when I use this, why I use this, and it's not a product I often use. Now it does have some highlighter shades to it too. I have pink champagne here, which has this like glow, which I'll put on the very tops of my cheeks. And this actually has shimmer particles in it. I'm not sure if you can see. Dusty Rose, which is a really pretty blush color. A little less bright than flushed. Very pretty though. Because of the texture of the product, it has a natural sheen to it. So your cheeks look like very apple and healthy. I also have this shade, uh, which is called Golden Hour. Also a highlighter with a little more of a nude pigment to it. 
I actually prefer this over pink champagne because it doesn't have noticeable glitter. And last but not least, I also have Happy Hour, which is another highlighty shade, which I'll just kind of put underneath here. But this one also has really intense sparkles. I just wanted to clear off my face yet again. This is the Lip and Cheek Stick in Rosy Brown. This one here, and it's a true convertible product. This one I don't think has the same scent as the Miracle Bombs. It seems different. And this one also has a really pretty glow to it, like a natural glow. But I find that it sets down better than the Miracle Bomb. And I really like this color. This is rosy brown. It's really pretty. This one has a really nice hydrating balmy feel and it goes on the skin really beautifully. Next, I'm going to put on my eyebrows. So this was the other pen. This is the other product. It's the eyebrow pencil in brown. I actually really like this. It's a thick chubby pencil, but I find that I put my eyebrows on in two seconds, two seconds. Eyebrow is on. It has just enough pigmentation to color in and I don't feel like it makes my eyebrows look as blocky. I would probably be interested in picking this up in a lighter shade, but I feel like it's the fastest eyebrow product I have. The other eyeshadow product I have is this Just a Second eyeshadow product in Cool Taupe. Reminds me of the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize. It's a really beautiful color. It is a one and done. My problem with this is I find that it doesn't stay. I have to actually use a primer, which sort of takes away from the effortlessness of this product. And I also think that just there are better formulas out there for this one and done, but it's pretty. It's a pretty color. It's a very small, easy to, you know, utilize product and I do like the effect. It's a really pretty effect. You can also use a brush to blend out the edges to really smooth it out and it's very, very nice. I have the Sparkle Wash and Gilded. This product, I'll just layer it up so you can see. This goldy, you can use a little bit, you can use a lot. It has a gel base to it. it. has a very cooling effect. And it's like a cooler toned gold. If you want that wet looking sparkle, it is nice. What I have found though is by the end of the day, a lot of the sparkles migrate down. And I have just other products that I probably like better than this one. So I don't think it is special enough. I wish it had more binder to it. I wish both products of the of the other eye products had more binder to it. I feel then it could have been something. Uh, last but not least in the line are these products. This is the lip tint as well as the lippy sticks. The first one that came out is the lip tint and I think this was a very confused release. I'll show you why. I actually have three shades. I'll put them all on. The first is this incredible neon orange shade. This is called Valencia Orange. When you think lip tint, you do not think this. This is the lip tint in Valencia Orange. This is a full-on cream slim lipstick. There's nothing lip tint about this. So this is Valencia Orange fully applied, blotted down twice over. This is what you get. I would have imagined that a lip tint would deliver this from the get-go. Now you can argue, well, it's an even better product because it gives you that flexibility, but it's not an easy product. It's not an easy product to apply because it's hard to draw in the lip lines with the type of uh, formula that it is. So you just have to be very careful on the more pigmented shades. But I just wish it would have delivered this shade from the get-go so that I can blindly apply it on the run, making it a real easy product, easy makeup. This is not easy. This is high maintenance. This is the shade Black Cherry. This is the shade Black Cherry Blotted Down. 
This is the shade Nude Rose. And here's the shade Nude Rose Blotted Down. All of these lip tints have a very nourishing, hydrating feel. Again, though, it has whatever that complex is of aromatherapy, which fortunately for me, I seem to have a bit of an allergy to. I do love this last shade. I feel like it's really like your lips, but better. The Nude Rose is beautiful. That Black Cherry, it's a little bit patchy, even full on. And if you're getting the blotted effect, very, very patchy. And the Valencia Orange is just a little too neon undertone for a lot of skin tones, I think. Uh, it still is a very, very pretty shade, and I think it will work on much deeper skin tones. The last product is the lippy sticks that just came out. I have two shades in these. This is more of a tinted lip balm. It comes in a heavy metallic packaging, but it's actually like just a lip balm format. This is what I would have thought the, the lip tint would have been. This is a shade Tulip. It's a very comfortable chapstick balm like formula. It's a really pretty blurring effect and I like this sort of warm soft pink color and here we have blackberry blackberry is what I wanted that black cherry to be um, this one actually applies real smoothly it feels like a, a tint uh, I just ate a lot of cherries and it's uh, that type of color I really really love this color I also really love tulip I actually just love this product more than the other one so these also have the same problem that they have that kind of fragrance in them the oils but i find that my lips react a bit less to this i just really can't wear them back to back so i maybe can wear this one day and give myself a break i am more willing to risk that side effect for this lip product because i like the effect of it i just think it's pretty so i know this was a lot of information i think that overall the brand is doing a good job in pushing the boundaries but needs to have a little more thought into how their products are going to be used that miracle bomb is a great concept if it contained spf i challenge someone to use it with SPF effectively and let me know how it goes because I have had really bad success. I'm really only comfortable using the product at night or when I know I'm not going to see the sun and when I feel like really that I love my skin and I just want my skin to glow and I do like some of those colors. So I will be keeping some of it, but it's really just for that one purpose. I feel like it would have much more purpose in my life if again, it had some SPF in it. There are a lot of good products, but products that could be better, definitely that brow gel. I feel like it had a lot of tint in it, just needs a change in the component and a little bit more binder, and I feel like it would be there. Um, a little more binder in the eye products, the single cream products, both the Sparkle Wash as well as the Just a Second Shadow needs more binding and i think you can get there with those products love the concealers it's my type of concealer not high coverage really easy to blend easy to use love the stick format and i also just love all the powder products adore the eyeshadows adore the bronzers adore that blush so be curious to hear if, if someone has tried it with very dry skin the foundation um, again, I feel like it can be more stable, it could be better in a component that didn't require you to get so messy. Anyhow, I hope again, this was a helpful tool for you as you are browsing their site and figuring stuff out for yourself. Let me know how it goes. Tell me products that you've really loved and um, hopefully I'll gather some of my thoughts on some other products I've been using and share them soon. Okay, I hope everyone has a great one and we'll talk soon. Take care.